Yeah, there's a lot of them. Throughout Dead Island 2's game design, as well as narrative design, as well as everything else, we've tried to keep zombies at the core, you know, at the center of the experience, and that means plot-wise as well. Dead Island 2 is a bit of a reboot. We've shifted the tone a little bit and we wanted to start the tale of the zombie from scratch. But we also wanted it to be a continuation of the original Dead Island. So although Dead Island and Riptide are considered canon and we've made a kind of statement to that fact with the inclusion of Sam B in the game, we are moving on for a new generation. And this is the, the real kind of tale of the zombie and your relationship with the zombie. We felt the story for the first one, although compelling and involving, was a kind of standard zombie tale. You know, there were plots within schemes, within conspiracies, within evil biotech companies and things like that. And it was all kind of standard, but didn't necessarily take us anywhere unique. And that's what we wanted to do with our zombies. We wanted to create a world for the zombies that meant something uniquely Dead Island and fitted in with the new time. The first game, it's a human story about humans. Like a lot of zombie IPs, zombies are a useful Useful narrative device, they're a useful backdrop, they're a setting and a mood more than they are central to the plot. And throughout Dead Island 2's game design as well as narrative design as well as everything else, we've tried to keep zombies at the core, you know, at the center of the experience, and that means plot-wise as well. You know, we wanted to make sure that fans of Dead Island 1 also didn't feel like we'd pulled a fast one on them, like we had drawn them in with the title and then started from complete scratch and, you know, ignored the emotional and personal connections they had to the universe that Dead Island is set in. It might be handy for players to view this as kind of chapter one, so we are setting up a trajectory. We like this idea of forum fodder, we like giving throwing leads out there for the, for the community to sort of what if about. You know, we've given it quite a certain direction when it comes to that story arc. There are a lot of answers buried around the world. We just haven't sort of force-fed them to the players or, you know, required you to understand world-building information to be able to have a good time and kill some zombies and, and cause a little mayhem. But if you are interested, you should look around. There are clues that relate to Dead Island 1 as well when it comes to Sam B, as obviously is, is in there and is the story. Um, there might be another clue or two scattered mm -hmm. around about maybe one or two other characters from the first franchise. But also, again, if you look, there might be clues as to the outbreaks themselves in the earlier games. Look, I killed it. We have uh, one or two sort of real lore enthusiasts who know the Dead Island one lore inside, out, upside down, and through, and we're able to suggest Easter eggy details. We're able to flag any potential conflict or any potential contradiction of existing lore or IP. So we have worked hard to make sure that it's not contradicting anything from, from Dead Island one, that those who are fans of the story and fans of that universe will find those fun little moments, those little callbacks, that people who are not familiar with it are not going to need to be, that they're going to be able to experience a good story on its own merits, and that we essentially really respected the tone of the gameplay in particular of Dead Island 1. Both Dead Islands I think are very, very gameplay centric, and that is as it should be, because it's a wonderful, pulpy, over-the-top, combat-centric, gory as hell experience for the players, and making the tone and the content of the stories of the dialogue match that over-the-top, pulpy feeling is really what we doubled down on, and that was what some of the challenges were about. It's like, that's a really cool story, it's very moving. It doesn't really fit <laughs> with what this is, with what we're trying to do here. How can we make it, how can we pump it up? How can we make it more sort of fun, over-the-top? Who's left in LA after it's evacuated? Not people who are on the ball, necessarily. <laughs> so who are they, you know? How do they, what do they want? What are they, what quest are they sending you on? Do you have pizza? Of course I do. Now let us in. Uh, yeah. Well, if I open this door, a whole load of zombies might rush in, and I'm pretty sure that's a, a bad thing. We started with a set of slayers, our six player characters, each with their own dialogue and personality. So, you know, you can play right through the game as one character and then start again, and you'll you'll get, even though the story is the same, you'll get a different perspective and a, and a, and a different play style. And, uh, different experience. And a different experience, yeah. Los Angeles is hit with 
a zombie outbreak. They are dealing with it. The military seem suspiciously on hand to be able to cope with the quarantine and the evacuation and the processing of uh, evacuees. Startlingly uh, competent, startling on, on the ball and startlingly uh, on time. And so that's, that's the metaphorical island, right? So Los Angeles is in lockdown, in quarantine, and everybody's trying to get out by hook or crook. And the story starts with our players being one of many people who have kind of bribed, cajoled, snuck on or whatever the last flight out of LA and that flight doesn't quite make it. For more from Dead Island 2, make sure to check out our final preview or the first opening minutes.